Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be out on our pirate ships because we're gonna be out trying to battle other ships and take down their crew, which essentially are potato, because today we're looking at potato pirates. This is a family level game for three to six players that teaches kids about computer programming using for loops and if and else loops, but doing it in a fun way that's educational, but yet still fun. This is on Kickstarter now. So let me show you how the game's played and I'll see you on the other side. Since this is a Kickstarter preview, the components and art are subject to change, so you'll want to check the Kickstarter page to make sure all of the final art and components. Now this game is three to six players, and you're trying to win by either gathering all seven Potato King cards, or by having all the other players eliminated by removing their crew and sinking their ships. Each player is going to start with two ships, with their ships in the anchor section, and they're all going to get ten crew. This is a five potato, so it's five crew, and each of these little ones are one, so you're going to get two ships and ten crew. Each player is also going to start with five playing cards with the Potato Pirates logo on it. Turns are very simple. You're going to draw two cards off the top of the deck. Then you're either going to build or run an attack on your ships. Now here we see they're in anchor mode. This allows us to stack up to three cards to prepare for a battle for next round. Now let's look at some of these basic action cards. On the left you see roast, that would allow us to roast one potato on a ship that is somebody else's. Uh, two is you'd mash two potatoes, and you could fry three potatoes. And since you could play up to three cards on any ship, you could play all three of these. So let's say on my ship on the right, I place these three cards like this. So that's going to be a roast, a mash, and a fry. So that could do uh, up to six damage on another ship next turn. Now on this ship, I've played one of these orange control cards, and this is the most interesting part of the game because it teaches kids about programming. This says, while greater than four. So while the target ship has more than four potatoes, you'll continue to roast one potato. Now that would have been my turn because I started to build on both of these ships, and it would be the other player's turns. But let's say it gets back to my turn, and this is how it looks. So let's say it comes back to me. Well, after I've drawn my cards, if I want to, I can... Uh, you know, rearrange cards. Maybe take some up from here and put them down. But if I touch this or I add or change it, then I have to stay in anchor mode. But if I'm ready to attack and I don't want to uh, change it at all, I can flip over the anchor card so we're going into battle. So here I flipped it to battle and you would run this program. So in this case, by default, you can only attack one ship. So this would do up to six damage on any one ship. So if this was an opponent ship, you could take the five, which is the big potato, the big crew, and one more so they would only have four left. If this is how they were when I had started to attack, well, all these would have been gone. They would have gotten discarded, and this would have been sunk and gone. If that player has no more ships or crew left, they're eliminated from the game. Now, whether or not the attack was successful, the cards on that ship that went to battle get discarded, and this stays like this because next turn it would then flip over to anchor. So that's basically how things work. You're either uh, adding cards to an anchored uh, boat or rearranging them, or you are going to flip it over and go into battle and resolve it and discard the card. So let's go over some of the different types of things you can do with these cards. Now, usually the opponent ships would be in front of themselves, but for the ease of you learning the game, I put them here. This is an opponent ship, and this is our ship, and we are about to go to battle here, and we're going to battle this, and this is going to be a wild loop and a roast. So we have, while this ship is greater than four, you'll roast one potato. So you will continue to roast one uh, until this ship has exactly four. So they would have just lost six potatoes there because this continues to roast until this uh, no longer has greater than four, then this would have been discarded. However, let's say we had this, four. This is a four loop. This is four three times roast one potato. So it would go one, two, three. Now remember, you can have up to three cards here on a ship. And let's say we did this. This is called a nested four loop because it's going to go for three times, but within that loop, it's going to go for two times. So essentially, for two times, it's going to roast one potato. So there's two potatoes gone but it's going to do that three times. So that's two more, and it's going to do two more. So essentially, it is going to take out 
six potatoes. Essentially three times two times however many were here. So it's gonna take out six total potatoes. And just to show you, there's other for loops that have different things, variables there. For Y times, Y is the number of ships that you have. So for the amount of ships, it's gonna four that many times. Or on the right, for X times. So depending on the number of cards in that in enemy's hands, it's gonna do a for loop that many times. And you can mix and match different controls. So you can say, while it has greater than four, four three times, you're gonna roast potatoes. So we'll look, it has more than four. Now that means for three times, we're gonna take three of these off. So we'll take three off, because it did that three times. And now we check again. This now has six. While it has greater than four, it does, we're gonna do three more. We're gonna take the five off and remove, put two back for change because it took uh, three off. And now we look and it is has to be more than four. It's not, so then it would stop. So that's how those sort of work together. Now the most powerful control card in the game is the if else cards because it's the only cards in the game that allow you to attack every ship. And you can actually put the other cards on both sides of these. Now remember, you can still only have three cards, but this is if. So you can attack ships with three or less potatoes and each ship that has three or less is gonna get roasted by one potato. Also else, attack ships with four or more potatoes. So because this was less than three, uh, three or less, you would take this off. And then all other ships that had four or more, you'd take two off. So those are very powerful. You could also put a control. Now remember, you can only have three cards, so else. So attack all ships with four or more potatoes. And then while they have more than four, you'll mash two. So this one's gonna get mashed two. And as long as it has more than four, it's gonna keep going two, it's gonna match this one, so it's gonna bring back three and change, because this is a five. And at this point, we have four, and this says with four or more. Well, the target has more than four, so it would stop here, because it has exactly four, but you can nest these sort of together. Now, you can also buy more ships on your turn. You have to spend four crew, so this is five. I'll spend the five, get one back, but you have to be able to put one here. Now, I also show you that during your turn, you can rearrange, as long as they're on the anchor side, you can rearrange, any number of crew to each of the ships. And also you can abandon a ship by placing that somewhere else and going down so that you have more crew on different ships. There's also four different types of surprise cards that can be played anytime, even on other people's turns. This switch allows you, depending on if you have one, two, or three ships, to get certain rewards. Otherwise you get nothing. Hijack, you can steal an enemy ship that's not in battle mode. If it's anchored, you can steal it and the cards from that player. Here you can steal two cards from an enemy's hand, and this blocks all attacks and surprises. Now, once you draw a Potato King, you place it down, and everyone immediately has to yell Potato King and salute you. Uh, the last one has to pay you two potatoes. Now, these go near your ships, they're face up, and they're considered as part of your hand, so people can do things to steal them from you. And again, the first one to get seven of these wins the game, or if you're the last person standing. You can also decide to play until the draw deck is depleted, and when that happens, whoever has the most Potato King cards is the winner. If it's tied, then you shuffle the deck and keep playing until there is one winner. Well, there is Potato Pirates, and as you can see, it's a light family game where you're teaching kids a little bit about programming while they're having fun sinking each other's ships and being saluted at, uh, and so cool idea there. Now, this game is on Kickstarter right now, so if you're interested in more, there's a link below in the description, and that will bring you right to the Kickstarter page where you can check it out in more detail, see all the latest that's going on there, and I'm sure the people at Potato Pirates would love your support.